<laughs> and everybody, it's so much fun. We're at brackets. Can you believe that we're at brackets? I think a little bit later than we usually are. Brackets, so much fun, though. This yo-jo music is way too good for its own good, let me tell ya. Welcome on back everybody to Cuso Grande. We are going to the final game of the day, but remember we have four more matches tomorrow. It's a very busy weekend. I hope that you uh, are having a lot of fun. I am definitely really enjoying everything that's happening here. Well, let's go ahead and get everything rolling. Our first GM here today, Iron GM Wrath of Tubin. You all remember him. It is our friend Doe Wolf. Second GM here. Haven't seen them yet today so far. Iron GM Control Scream. I suppose we need to control it as much as possible. Is our friend Donkey Clonk. Why did my brain just stop working right there? Well, finally, we've got Iron GM. Wait, you're still here? Yeah, he is still lurking here and there. It is our friend Dana. Haha, -ha. you didn't expect to see a grumpy face here, did you? Well, you did. Okay, now I'm really hoping that I have all the players in the correct locations while Clades decide to go for our scary Tubin bin friend, Doe Wolf. And our other player, someone3255, actually opted to go with Dana, which means that Donkey Clunk is the final GM of the day, Donkey Clonk. Come on in, I wanna chat with you and see what kind of madness you have. Uh, and I need to hide the game pick before I do. And for for some reason, you've got Blasphemous Roar's picture here. Let me fix this. Hello, Donkey Clonk. Ah, uh, hello there. Hello. You know, this is all Blasphemous Roar's fault, okay? He this just, game he wanted a specific was, bouncy thing. It was weird. Yes, and uh, the bounciness of the last game is definitely an inspiration for me to pick the game that I chose. Oh, no. No, but there are no kangaroos in this game. Okay. Instead, it's a game fit for the spooky, scary season coming up. Oh, I like that little roll that you did with the uh, scary. I... I my, I am physically incapable of rolling my R's. Yeah, I just can't do it. But yeah, uh, so we've got a scary bouncy game? Yes, uh, so the last game was perhaps inspired by In a Dark Forest uh, mm. because it was a flip screen platformer where you couldn't stop bouncing. Yes. But there is an even older flip screen platformer where you can't stop bouncing, and it's even been in Cus Grande before. Oh, yeah. In Cus Grande 4, to be exact. We have Cauldron 2, The Pumpkin Strikes Back for Commodore 64. Look at this, look at this warty nerd. Oh, he's got a long nose, he's got a long chin. Oh my gosh, he could bend his nose down to touch his chin. That is scary. I don't like it. I don't like it. But you know what? The two players who are playing this will have to figure out how to get through as much of this as possible, even if they aren't the biggest pumpkin fans or the biggest fans of bouncing objects either. This is a game that I actually think was great for its time and that has not aged super well. Yeah, this received great reviews when it came out, but uh, oh my word. <laughs> I am I am GM control screen and this game definitely fits that. Yeah, yeah. It certainly does. Cauldron 2, the pumpkin strikes back. Cauldron 1 is a completely different type of experience that is still worth experiencing as well, even though it has its own problems. 
Okay, the big question is, are they... Do they have limited lives? Do they have unlimited lives? Um, they have limited lives, of course. <laughs> I want to give them the proper experience of the game. Okay, I am checking with the players right now to see if they are ready to get rolling, aka bouncing in this game. And they are! Everybody, I need you to get all of your pumpkin slash scary emotes and spam those in chat because we are doing the countdown. Spam! Bring me the emotes and then after I get the timer started, I can start eating my burrito again. Ah, here we go. Hey, wait a second. The players appear to have started in different rooms. What is happening here, Donkey Clonk? Well, the starting room is randomized. Uh, there are a set of uh, rooms that you can start in. But uh, the goal of the match is to collect uh, flashing items which are scattered across the castle. Don't worry, everybody. I will fix the aspect ratio this is sort of a given when it comes to any donkey clunk game that i'm gonna have to fix stuff so i will i don't even tell people anymore it's just what we've come to expect <laughs> oh, the uh, witch is, place is right next to one of the first items in the game uh, which is the scissors there we go clates and has Clayton's the scissors <laughs> Yes, and uh, here you can see one g way the game is being nasty by making you do blind jumps into other screens when those screens have the uh, water. Oh, yeah. So we are judging this based off of the number of key items that they collect, right? Uh, yes, and uh, one of the, the spawn points is right next to the item. So I made a provision that uh, the chalice cannot be the first item that you collect. Okay. Basically, uh, if they do that, then... Then it's an invalid run and they must reload the reset. Aha! I like it. Oh no, Glades! Yeah, and Dana uh, showed Link to Game map in the game in the chat uh, this is an enormous game it's huge but this is absolutely like uh peak commodore 64 slash zx spectrum style of game uh if you if you know vvvv for example uh it drew a lot of inspiration from games of this era and i i'd say that this is pretty even though it, it's a little less chaotic than some of the games that you'll find that have some really weird enemies and objects, uh, it it still has a lot of the elements that you'll probably recognize. One room puzzles, uh, each room static that have very uh, like simplistic moving enemies that are still very, very much a pain in the butt, you know? Nothing too complicated from any of these enemies in the game. Yeah, it's going to be important for the players to make a mental map, or perhaps even a map on pencil and paper for this. Mm -hmm. Also, you have absolutely zero air control in the game. Uh, when you, once you have bounced, you are committed totally to the bounce. So question, it looks like a lot of these objects you can kill, but I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, you need to pick up uh, one of the sparking uh, things and uh, that will increase your magic meter. Also, your magic meter drops by one point every time you shoot, and as someone is uh, about to experience, if your magic meter goes all the way down to zero, then you die. Yep, even if you shoot and it goes down to zero, that still counts. Uh, I would say, though, if you are, like, rather than hitting enemies, shooting them is definitely better. But uh, those enemies that you can shoot anyway, because that is not uh, 
Guaranteed for all, all enemies. Yeah. Ooh, uh, Clades well, is Clades, down to uh, zero hit. health. Uh, Clades uh, hit an enemy uh, which reverses your controls. You can tell that because the pump can uh, starts flashing. <laughs> I love it. So right now, uh, the best that we have so far, Clades has collected a single item in this run and has in previous runs as well, or one previous run. So, you know, right now the record to beat is one. Yeah. We're only four minutes into it like that. That's not too much of a surprise. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of exploration involved in this match. Uh, players will need to make a mental note of the the game map and where the items are. But even if you have a map for this, uh, just the controls make this such an incredibly frustrating game to play. Well, it becomes a puzzle platformer because, you know, whenever you bounce, you have a set jump, which means that if you bounce the same way every time, you'll go the same distance and land the same place every time. Yeah, navigation can be a puzzle, definitely. I think in order to really start making progress in this game, uh, you have to get to the point where uh, you are treating it sort of like that puzzle platformer where you're like, okay, this specific jump, I need to be in this specific location so that I can bounce off of this wall and land up here. And what once you get to that point... You have played this game too much. <laughs> Clade's got two items. That's a pretty strong early lead. What do the items do, by the way? Uh, so the axe uh, makes you able to pass through doors, and Clade's is going the wrong way. There is an invincible enemy that prevents you from going left on that screen. Uh, the chalice... Uh, prevents art enemies from reversing your controls. Mm. Uh, there is a shield which makes you vulnerable to skeletons, which are otherwise a one-shot enemy. Yeah, those skeletons are definitely a pain, but... Uh, let's see. What about the scissors? Did the scissors do anything? I might have missed you saying about those. Uh, so, th let me read you the game's manual, which I also gave the... Ooh, okay. Where once the tiny cottage stood, a mighty Ooh. palace dwarfs the wood, Ooh. and there within the highest tower, the witch queen wields her mighty power. A rule of evil crossed the land with ghosts and gargoyles close at hand. Her enemies destroy the night, yet one remains to set things right. A pumpkin warrior, brave and good, the last survivor from the wood. Now go now swiftly, climb the stair, and cut a lock of witch's hair. Yes. Seek then out the cauldron black, and brew a spell to change things back. Then the hag will know defeat, and thy revenge will be complete. And that is, by the way, what you got if you bought a game, and that's all, all that is in the manual. That's all the information you get? Well, that didn't help. I mean, it sort of uh, helped. We got to cut uh, off her hair and brew a potion. Yes, and uh, you will need uh, uh, scissors to cut off the, the witch's hair, but you also need a crown. Otherwise, uh, the witch kills you instantly when, when you enter the room. And you also need a spell book uh, to make uh, the potion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Sorry, I'm really enjoying this burrito and I'm almost done with it. Oh. There, sorry, sorry for all that crumpling sound. I invited Dana to comment on this game because from what he said in uh, 
the, when he gave the game out, he has completed it. Ooh, yeah, come in, Dana. I, uh, if he would like, he is definitely welcome. This is a game that I, I've played a little bit, and I honestly really like this type of game. But then again, I played a lot of Atari games when I was young. And, and because of that, you know, it, it, it's something that really is much closer to the type of game I played in my childhood. I love this, even though, like, you just have to approach it with a very different mindset. Don't think of it really as a platformer. Learn the exact arcs that you make and how to make some of the trickier arcs, because... Uh, some of them, I believe it depends on how high you're bouncing, how far you're going to be able to go. And I believe that you can increase your bounce height, uh, like, to about three different levels, something like that. Uh, yeah, there are, yeah, there are three different bounce heights, depending on you how, holding down the fire button. And you have to hold the fire button neutral, otherwise you use up your magic if you have it. Hold a joystick neutral on me with a fire button. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the chats. Like, if Dana was one of them choosing choosing a game for today and they chose Donkey Kong instead, then isn't it just an illusion of choice? And I would say Who knows yes. what Dana might, might have chosen. <laughs> Dana said he was going to choose this. I love it. Well, I mean, there's a third GM who probably wouldn't have chosen this. Hello, Dana! Ah, uh, you're just lurking, are you? I, I see you here. Just hiding. Hiding in the Discord. That's okay. Well, we are 11 minutes into the match. Right now, we have had a lot of death. I feel like Clades has taken a pretty clear lead. Uh, but it really doesn't matter too much until, you know, people start getting three or four items. At that point, they really establish that they are in the lead. Yeah, the first uh, part of this match, even though uh, the last game this time this was played, it was the one with two items, two and a half, because uh, uh, the chalice was counted as a tiebreaker last time. I'm doing it sl a slightly different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dana did mention he had to move his computer, so the microphone might not be. Yeah, he's set trying up to get it working. Yet. Well, you can you can hear us, Dana, and we love you. Yeah, he's all it's all busted. It's okay, Dana. It's okay. You're a good friend anyway. You're a good. You're a good guy. Uh, also, he shows up as muted on Discord. Yeah, he's a he's three muted. He's he's trying. He'll he'll get here. I have faith. Well, yeah. So big question: Why is a pumpkin trying to take on the witch? Uh, because uh, the witch was bad, mean to the pumpkin in the prequel to this. Oh yeah, this is a sequel. Yeah, in the first game, I believe you play as the witch, right? That is uh, exactly correct. Yeah. Uh, and as it turns out, you, uh, the player, are a big, giant jerk to this pumpkin slash jack-o'-lantern. How could you? How could you, chat? I love that Clades is almost finding a clip, which I believe you can clip through the wall to the left in certain situations. Yeah, last time this was given some, some players clip, but, I, but never in a helpful way. Hi, did this work now? Yay, we hear you, Dana! Hooray! Yeah, so I know that you are a huge lover of this game. 
I, I mean, I have at some point or another throughout throughout Kuso given every cauldron game that exists. Aren't there only two? No, remember? There was that third one that was on Amiga that was kind of like by Titus? No, what? Uh, what? Yeah, I gave that one out too. It, 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 it had like a little chibi witch. Oh, and that's it was right. By Titus. Super Cauldron. Yeah. Okay, I vaguely remember that. Oh, oh no. There's also Cauldron Six in One. Uh. Okay, I don't know that. One. I don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of that either. But no, I probably you're trying to insinuate that I would have given this out today if I had gotten picked. That's probably not true. Okay, so oh, we thought probably that, we thought that players would have gotten this if you were cho. Okay, okay. Well, good to know that it's a lie. No, so it would have been pretty funny. So I might have. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, what we we had golf and then we had bouncy Sonic and now we've got bouncy pumpkin. It, it's a good pumpkin. This oh. is actually my favorite cauldron game like the the I first one the best one yeah it, it is it is the best one like the first one's just ridiculously hard yeah um this one is also hard but it's more fair about how hard it is it doesn't look like it's fair about it but compared to the first one yes yeah i and then, i would agree with that like Here's the deal. The enemies don't move super fast. As long as you make the same movements every time, you'll get the same results in this game. Uh, it Even with all of the blind jumps that go on in this, that was sort of par for the course when it came for Commodore 64. And the game's not so long that it, it, it's not super punishing with the with those jumps. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's almost no. fun to jump in, just jump into the air because, you know, I'll probably land on something. I don't know what I'll land on, but I got to give it a shot. Yeah. Now, there are certain versions of this game, like the one I had as a kid, that even though it wasn't, uh, it didn't have a trainer built in, this was actually like an official copy that had an extra key that would let you reset the room. This was really abusable. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could see that. So. Um, yeah, uh, using that, well, were you able to get through it? Oh, yeah, because it, it, it lets you it lets you get through. It lets you skip some sections. Um, basically, it, it was R, I think, was the key. It, it literally was just R for reset. Uh -huh. So, there are certain rooms in this place where you can jump really high and just jump into the other room, but you can't actually stay in that room huh. because there's nothing to land on. So, you're telling you me that this game has a mulligan really button? Fast, it'll reset you back into that room into a safe spot. The, the trainer has a mulligan button, if I'm not mistaken. Was that what you were saying? Um... Uh, or is it the mine base game itself? Oh, okay. Yeah, mine was actually built into the game. It was a later version of the game, I think. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking... No, because, like, I bought Cauldron and it had it. I'm taking a look at uh, a lot of the people who worked on this, you know, uh, working on some of the other classics like Cauldron 1, obviously. Uh, but also Last Ninja 3 is one that I see on uh, one of their resumes. And then the guy who did some of the audio for this, uh, I think all of the audio for this, actually did the audio for Glover. Glover. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see the, well... Okay, and I guess for James Pond 3, and for uh, Myth, blah blah, blah and for WizKid, and for Gods, and for Creatures 2, and basically everything. How about some of the dialogue post-production for Elder Scrolls 4? Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion? Yeah, that's what I'm calling it now. Um, 
also did uh, the music for Cannon Fodder, which uh, I think is a very memorable scene. Ooh. And Cannon Fodder is pretty good music, yeah. Let's see. Um, I know you were asking about, like, what, what items did what before, and I don't know if everything got covered. Uh, did you mention what the axe did? Because I see that they both actually have it. Aha, uh -huh, they do! Yeah, so let us ask you what it does. What does the axe do? You technically don't need it. <laughs> it does not. The axe, the axe help, will open doors for you. Well, okay. And you that's do important. not technically need to go through the doors because you can always go around them. Does it help, though? Yeah, it helps because you can shortcut stuff, but you don't technically need the axe. Okay, okay. Well, still, it, even it's, if you don't technically need it, it still is helpful. It's, uh, it's extremely helpful. Just and also, it's not that hard to pick up. Mostly it's right required. There. Mostly. Oh, yeah, Time Wander, you've got a good point. The, the audio guy for this game did it do some of the post-production for uh, the dialogue in Elder Scrolls IV, which definitely has some lines that should have been outtakes, but were left in the final game. So I'm watching you. I'm watching you, Richard Joseph, okay? Can't just leave in bloopers. But yeah, Glover, oh my gosh. Glover is, a, Glover is a video game. Oh, I've beaten it. I know. Yeah. It's not easy. Boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Clades, what are you doing? You having fun yet? Oh, he says this isn't good. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I see what he's... <laughs> I envy the, he says in Discord, I envy the people who played Sonic 1 Bounce Edition. Oh. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's, it, they're bouncing. Yeah. Okay, so apparently it's... he just left his pumpkin there to, so that he could type in Discord while the pumpkin was just bouncing all over the place. I mean, that's fair. Yeah. I mean, we could play gummy bears. No. Just, <laughs> no, we're, we're playing this, okay, Dana? Yeah. We're not playing any of your weird gummy bear games. But you can bounce here and there. Well, they can go bounce off. <laughs> well, that is everywhere. <laughs> it's so dumb. <sighs> so here's the deal. Even though Clades doesn't love this game, he's still... Uh, uh, I think Clades is the first to commit suicide by shooting. Nah, I saw someone 3255 do that, I think. And everyone will have your ammo also be your health is just rude, really. <laughs> like, I guess it kind of makes sense in the context of this game because, you know, most pumpkins don't bounce or just... like kill people. So, you know, the really fact that any... this pumpkin can, it means that it is magic power and a magic pumpkin casting magic spells would definitely be using more magic than originally intended. So I could see you running out of magic power, but still, it's dumb. You should just make shooting free. Make it like Mega Man, okay? This game is hard enough without adding that in. Like, you know, so, sometimes uh, I, I can see uh, games doing something like that uh, and understand the reasoning behind it. Uh, simply put, a lot of Commodore 64 games are short. And simple, you know, they do not take very long to get through uh, unless you add some of those extra difficulty factors. That's not the case with this game. Someone uh, spawned in the room with the, the crown, and mm -hmm. this room can be a horrible trap if you don't have the shield, uh, because uh, the skeleton will, will one-shot you. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I was going to say... I was going to say... We made the the rule about the chalice and not about the crown because the crown, the crown is not easy even if you get dropped right on it because you don't have the shield then. <laughs> oh, there we go. It is, 
Crown acquired by someone 3255. That is one item currently held. Remember, if they die and run out of all of their lives, they do start back with zero items and progress is based off of who has the most total collective items at, at any given time. So Clades has held two items at the same time in the past. Uh, the scissors and the axe. Someone 3255 had found the axe before, but only has the crown at this point. It would only count as holding one item, even though he has found two different items. So, I do remember that there was a trick in the crown room that's really hard to pull off, and I'm not sure if, like, it's even possible to do on command. You can jump into the chandelier and you get stuck and it'll shove you up into the room above it which is really handy because it's really hard to get to that next level from down oh yeah i think i've seen people do that uh it's before it's hard to do on command oh, yeah. but it but it does exist well doing think... most things on command in this game yeah, no right. no it's no it's not too hard you just have to keep in mind you know where are the one hit kill enemies you know and as long as you are avoiding them then you can usually just do everything that you want yeah that was what i was going to bring up a second ago the the little spiders are weird oh, oh someone is getting the axe now there we go two items collected at the same time this ties him with clades if i'm not mistaken so the little spiders, most of them are high damaging, but fine. Okay. But like, there's like, I, I don't know, 30, 50%, maybe half. Yeah, maybe half of the, the little spiders are instant kill spiders. I have no idea why. Now, Time Wanderer, you're asking, so why are they not getting the chalice? And the reason behind that is that if you spawn in the chalice room, uh, then you can pretty much get it immediately. Uh, and so that makes it much more determined by luck. By banning yeah. the chalice as the first collected item, that means that players will not just sit there and reset until they get the chalice room. Yeah, the chalice is a freebie. The crown is not a freebie because of how difficult the room is. The chalice is literally just bouncing you got it. But that's technically everything if you think about it. But you know what I mean. Yep, uh, there, there's a set number of rooms that you can spawn in. I do not believe the scissors room is one of those. The, that map that I have up hatch uh, The scissors it. are might be one of the easiest items to get to because you just uh, can fall off the tower to the left. Yeah. Okay, so they're yeah. easy to get, but you do not start in the room that has it. Yeah, uh, yeah. And since, since the shield is on the left side of the tower, it is possible to grab the shield uh, and punch off the castle and then get the scissors right after. Oh, okay. The best spawning point, for, in my opinion, is probably actually the crown room. Because if you can grab the crown, it's only a couple rooms away to get the shield, and then you True. can fall down and get the scissors. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's about one, two... If you go two rooms to the left from the crown, and then up two rooms, and then left one more, that's the shield. Jump down forever to get the scissors. Getting back from the scissor area is a little bit difficult, though, because uh, it's very easy to fall into the water and die. Yeah. Uh, so that's the only downside there. You, you have to know how to get back from the scissors. And, and But the problem is, once you've got the scissors, you've got to go all the way back up. But you have to do that pretty much anyway, because... You need the scissors to get the hair at the top, so you're going to have to make that climb at some point. So you grab the scissors, you go up and grab the axe and the chalice on your way back up. Oh, yeah. You go all the way to the top and get the hair and the book, and then back down and you're done. 
I still love so that, terrible. like, I, I've talked about how this game is a classic uh, and is possibly one of the best Commodore 64 games out there. I, I think that it's a fantastic Commodore 64 game. However, Clades has also said that he would rather be playing the Bouncing Sonic game than this. Uh, and I think that that goes to show that this hasn't aged as well as a lot of games out there. It it feels worse control-wise compared to, to like, Bouncy Sonic. Because while uh, Sonic had a lot more, like, randomness to how you were bouncing around, because you were bouncing around a lot faster and all over the place, you felt like you were more in control because you could actually stop. Yeah. And, like, adjust yourself. And you can't do that in this. Everything is determined by the height of your bounce at the time of your movement. There's no... Yeah, the only point where you're actually controlling anything is in the moment uh, that a pumpkin hits the ground. Yeah, again, but... Bouncing Sonic was still a platformer, like, pretty through and through. This is a puzzle platformer, uh, especially in some of the tougher rooms where you just have to figure out where you need to be distance-wise in certain areas in order to accurately make a jump without bouncing off of something else. Which, I, I honestly love puzzle platformers, you know? I I, I dig that. I, I dig not being able to... When you know that a game is completable and that there are limited ways to move, if you embrace those limited ways, then, you know, it's going to start feeling more natural to you. At least it does to me. Right. Yeah. I mean, it. it's not like an action game where it's completely, well, I just don't have the skill for this, and if I need to, like, get muscle memory and stuff like that, I can't figure it out. There goes someone, three, two, five, five. Whee! <laughs> Wait, did that count as a death? No, it does oh, not okay. actually count as a death. She just laughed at you anyway, because she fell off the castle. It's funny. Well, someone, three, two, five, five has two items. Uh, I feel like he could put himself in the lead if he can collect one more, which there should be something down in this area, I believe. Nope. Never mind. Yeah, don't fall down that hole. That's if you don't have all the items and you go down there, you it's it's game you over die because you're you done. can't get back out. Yeah. yeah, I actually added something to the menu to try to dissuade the players from going down to the cauldron first. I added till all six items you have collected, the cauldron is too well protected. <laughs> Nice. Oh, man. I appreciate the rhyme. Yeah, people are saying you should do audiobooks. You could do audiobooks well. You've got you've got a good voice, a very like especially when you start getting dramatic. I I, I dig the voice, Donkey Clonk. It's good. Me, like it's I can get all dramatic, but it's more shrill dramatic. It's not gonna work so well for audiobooks. And I sound like a nerd, like by default. There's no now way that I can. Like... Yeah. Don't I sound like a nerd? I, I was implying that you do more than sound like that. Well, right? I mean, okay, I am a nerd, but there I also go. sound like a nerd, right? <laughs> I mean, right? I've got, I've got the voice. I've, I've, I've kind of got a nasally voice because. Guess what? All my life, my nose has pretty much been stuffed up. Yeah, I, I feel you on that one. I had that problem, too. Although it's much less than when I was younger. Uh, although people have said that I, I, could, I could do a mad scientist. I could see that. Yeah. So if any books... Need a mad scientist voice to read the entire book. I'm there! I'm there! Yeah! 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 
you could do the voice for Doom 2. That was a mad scientist. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Nah, honest, well, whatever, I do a lot of different voices, it's just, you know, most people don't want to listen to my voices for more than, like, maybe a minute. After that, they start, like, it either needs, it, it needs to be balanced out with other voices. Although, I thought about, oh my gosh. I want to pay attention to this game instead of talking about myself. Look at these weird, like, the green goblins or whatever the crap they are. What are they? I like gargoyles, them. I would say. Gargoyles? They've got really <laughs> strong legs. They're kind of gargoyly, but not really compared to the ones that are actually on the edges of the castle. Now, those are real gargoyles. Oh, yeah. Uh, someone3255, you are wasting a lot of magic, but I don't know if you know that you're going to die shooting it. Well, we might see that. Well, see, Never mind. Full magic. Doesn't matter. So here's the problem and why it looks like they're wasting magic. Okay. Why? Uh, to control your bounce height, you have to press the button. Correct. To shoot, you have to press the button. Okay. Uh, do you push the button and a direction to shoot? Is there yes. any difference? Is there any difference between the two? No. You oh, can, no. I, I mentioned it earlier. You can do a high jump uh, by neutral fire. Right. Because shooting is fire plus a direction. So but if you're if you're constantly on the move and you're adjusting your bounce on the fly, you're going to be using magic. Basically. Oh yeah, definitely. But it, is it possible? Yes. Is it likely? No. Poke! <laughs> laugh, witch! Laugh! Okay, there we go. Someone three two five five is down uh, to oh. the final. Life and that spider right oh, there. Oh, and a one-hit spider. Oh no, the spider. That was an insta kill. <laughs> Had a real good chance to get uh three so items there. It looks like three two or someone three two five five is actually resetting, trying to get uh, a different spawn. Probably looking for the crown spot again. I mean, that's a valid strat and something that I would totally try, even if you gave me the rule that I can't collect the chalice first. Uh, but Honestly, someone... that would mean I'd want to avoid the chalice because then I'd have to come back to it anyway. But yeah, it's, I would definitely want to start at the crown if I knew the map, which they don't technically, so... But someone has picked up the crown several times. Whee! Okay, I'm, I'm trying to figure out exactly what someone 3255 is trying to do here. Maybe just... There we go. Maybe. Whee! Into the spider. Ha ha ha! Oh, that jump! That was a strong, beautiful jump. <laughs> well, there's a clip through the floor. Yeah, there. Clips through the floor are oddly common. So I do have a question. Do the magic refills respawn? Do or. As soon as you collect them, are they gone until you get a game over? No, they respawn. Okay, that's actually pretty helpful and would let me feel more comfortable being liberal with my my projectiles. What kill? I did not see 
what yeah, killed Time Wanderer just asked what killed Clades. I would I, I didn't see. guess it might be because Clades, Clades ran. got a shield and uh, is Ooh. about to get uh, the scissors. Very nice. Uh, possibly because Clades ran out of magic. So someone 3255 is trying to get past this spider. I don't believe there's an item to the right here. Unless you are able to loop around and get the scissors in the forest. No, you can't loop, because that red bat is, is invincible and cannot be dodged. Oh yeah, it's, it just moves right along with you. <laughs> so Paul linked a, an old magazine review of this game that gave scores of 90% for presentation, for a nice control method, great attract sequence, and attractive inlay. Because the box really matters. But still, nice control method. No getting past that spider either. That spider is a big evil butt. Oh, there's the crown room. Definitely a decent room to start in. Now, what does the crown item do? It allows you to go into the witch's room without uh, the witch insta killing you. Oh, yeah. The witch has uh, guardians that swarm you like super fast, unless you have the crown. That's right. We haven't seen anybody go up to the witch room yet, have we? No, we haven't. Oh. I mean, uh, to be fair, they die right away, so that's probably fine. <laughs> okay. Oh, the skeleton! Ah! Someone threw the vengeance so at Skellied! And then Shed Let's see, what, what other scores did this game get from the review at the time? It got a 96% for graphics. Honestly? It says a wonderful representation of the castle, with lots of well-drawn and animated nasties to be seen. There are a lot of animations uh, that honestly didn't need to be this detailed. The candles, for example, have the flaming, like, the little flames, which, to be fair, I, I, I like that most of the things that deal damage to you or kill you are moving so that it's much easier to see. You have it's to remember, this came out in 1986. But it's Commodore 64. And uh, I don't believe it was... Let's see, where was it made? That's my question. Uh, I think Palace Software was UK. Yeah, if it was specifically uh, aimed as a local production for Commodore 64, Amstrad CPC, and ZX Spectrum, and you want the game to basically play the same on all three... You have to make it relatively simple. Uh, yeah. And I would say that the graphics work, they do the job here. Like, they're very clean graphics that, like, there's nothing uh, indistinct. You can tell what everything is, and it's all done very stylistically. Yeah. So, graphics, yeah, I'll give it that. Sound, 96%. Short, but neat tune on this title screen and superlative sound effects. Here's the I deal. Wouldn't... The sound effects are I mean, not annoying. Yeah, I I don't agree with this score because I feel giving something a 96% when it doesn't have any in-game music is just kind of wrong. <laughs> but if this had in-game music that compared with the title screen music, then I would absolutely do that. But, but it, would, it would either be music or sound effects, you know? You can't have both. You can have both. It's hard. It is hard. But you can have both. You're asking this for isn't a an immediate. <laughs> and then we have the uh, the score of hookability. It's what the, the magazine called it. 94% hookability. Ooh. Highly addictive. From the very first boing. <laughs> Highly addictive from the very first boing. Yeah, that's what they said about cocaine. 
Buggability. Boing. Boing. <laughs> Just gonna move on. Okay. Last ability. 93%. Why are they just making up these words? Yeah, there there are actual words for this. Yeah, right? Like what? A difficult but enthralling game which requires lots of per perseverance to complete. I can definitely agree with that one. What would you put and then, instead of last ability? What's, what's a good word? Uh... My brain's not working right now. No, I, I, as soon as you asked the question, I completely lost what word like, I was going to use for it. Hook ability. I was actually going to bring them. Yeah, and then you add. Like, replayability is something that people say as well, but that's also it's just me. really up. replayability, though, because it, that implies that you beat the game. Oh, it would. We, we generally say estimated playtime these days rather than last yeah. ability. That's yeah. And then, ability would be addictiveness or like easily yeah that would be addictiveness but they probably didn't want to say that i can kind of see why they wouldn't want to use addictive but eh. whatever they but said they from the very the... first boing they yeah. can say addictive. See, they, use it in the, they use it in the little blurb about it and then it's just like making up words I think they're trying to make a distinction because uh, of how good the game is when you start playing it versus how good the game is uh, to play for a few hours. Hmm. And then they gave value for money, 94%. A quid cheaper than most games, and it's ever so good. Honestly, for the time, I... Actually, I, I wonder... Yeah, longevity is definitely a word that exists. Well, longevity uh, would have been a good one, yeah. Yeah, instead of... Last ability. Last ability, longevity. But then you'd have to possibly explain what that means to the peasants. I mean... I, yeah. I, I, Dana, how much did this game cost? Again. <sighs> um... So my important eight, question eight, eight, here... 99 uh, for the cassette. If apparently. nobody gets more than two items, then how is the tiebreaker being decided? It would be tied because you got two items first. But that was yeah. like ten, five minutes into the match. <laughs> yes, well... <laughs> Sometimes these things happen. Yeah, the, the general rule is whoever made it to the tie first is the victor. There are times that we have done, you know, if people uh, are tied at the end, whoever got uh, the biggest variety of items through the playthrough is the victor. But if that's not specified beforehand, that is not a metric that we would use. We want them to know that the general rules are what are accepted here yeah okay so this yeah, was this apparently is... 15 to 20 usd uh, see i don't know that still would be a lot for me as a kid like i mean you say that but Compare it to the $60 games. I mean, yeah. And I, I remember when uh, my parents got me Final Fantasy VI for my birthday. And uh, I know for a fact that was like $80 or $90. And that was I remember, before, yeah. before factoring in inflation. Like, seriously. Breath of Fire 2, I remember getting it KB and it was like 110 Super Nintendo cartridges went stupid high at yeah. one point. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there are people in chat saying, you know, they've played hundreds of games worse than this, or that this doesn't actually look that bad. And it's really not. I, I in, highly enjoyed this game as a kid. I still like it now. Some games make it into Kuso because they're just mean. Well,
it's also something that you know hasn't aged nearly as well as any other games like the genre basically doesn't exist anymore you know and there there are reasons for that it, it's you know uh simply put memory space is a lot larger these days so it's a lot easier to create uh, a variety of enemies that actually make sense instead of a hammer chasing a mouse and a pair of floating scissors. Like, what the crap? Like, the skeleton makes sense, but, you know, when you're dealing with limited memory space, you just have to make stuff that is going to fit and that sort of makes sense, you know? Okay, clades, two items again. Trying to get away from the spider. Oh, oh, or over the spider. I don't think anybody's going to manage to do that, though. There's no point to it either because it's the there's nothing the over there. Yeah, but yeah, they don't I can't know go to the left because of the invincible bat. But they don't know that. They don't know the bat's invincible. Only we know. Oh, their clade's gonna die from invincible bat. <laughs> I think yeah, clade you... knows. Yeah, don't do that anymore. Hey, someone three two five five all the lies on this. Someone three two five five has the start that he was looking for, specifically getting the crown with all of his lives left, and that is a very nice start to an attempt. Now, no player has gotten more than two items at the same time, so we're just looking for somebody to get their third in order to move into the lead. <laughs> I'm an evil witch. Blah, blah, blah. I do. I did actually post a, a nice little MP3 clip of the laugh in Discord and in chat, actually. Oh, because... good. I, yeah, <laughs> I, I now have a soundboard that I can play stuff. Excellent. Because yeah. I, it's one of my alerts. For when I stream, which is not often, but you know, someone three two five five just got the axe. By the way, that don't also impress two me items. much. Yeah, the axe. Uh, if you go right from the axe and a little bit up, you can get to the chalice. Which at this point they can get the chalice uh, after having at least one item. They can get the chalice, and that is fine. But also, yeah, the thing is, going left, I think someone three two five five knows where the scissors are and is trying to go for that. But that's a decent way away. Like, I would not go for it. Again, I know the map, so... But it, yeah, if you know that there's an item over there and that there's a chance at all that you can get there, then it makes sense. Someone 3255 almost dead from running out of magic, though. Uh oh where are you going? Uh oh Ah, jumping out the window. Honestly, this is a good move because someone 3255 can go to the left and grab the scissors falling down from the tower here. So this could actually be a lead change right about now. Like someone 3255, if you keep going to the left, yeah, you gotta, you gotta do your low hops. Here we go, so, scissors. Nice. That is three items, and I believe that is a new lead. Right near the end, but uh, Clay does have the shield and the scissors. Correct. Clay's could and easily tie it up go really get the quickly. axe and chalice from where he is. Just got to get up there in the next seven minutes. Yeah, collecting two items is definitely doable. Don't land on the spider. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? That spider just... Like, I don't know why the spiders instantly kill pumpkins, but that's what it ha... That's what they do. That's what they do. 
<laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, everybody, no. if, if you are carving pumpkins this uh, season... Oh, no! Bam! I <laughs> knew that was going to happen as soon as he died. I love it. I love it. But, you know, only one extra life for Clades. This is still a possible... Not necessarily a lead change, but it, it, it's well, possible yeah, that... Yeah, possible that Clades could get another item, the chalice, I think, if oh. you move up a little bit. Right. Yeah, the axe is on the way to the chalice, but it's a climb and uh, vertical progress is difficult. I've noticed. <laughs> yeah. Clades is trying. You know, he's, he's trying. It's it's rough. <laughs> the climb up the, the castle is extremely difficult yep you you need to learn exactly which jump heights you need in order to get up there and clades managed to get a bounce off of a wall that positioned him just right to get up to this area i love that there's a shield there but that's not the shield you need it's just a lie Okay, Clades going no. up right. Hmm? I thought he was about to fall and die. I, I'm a little bit behind you because I'm just watching your stream. No, I see. Terrible. I see. Yeah, unfortunately, this is too low for the chalice. The chalice is one, two rooms up above that gargoyle. So a, still a decent amount of a climb here if Clades is able to do that. Yeah, see, here's a problem. The doors. When that that death he took from the spider actually kind of completely messed him up because it put him on the wrong side of the the door. Yep. And if you're on the wrong side of the door, there's very little you can do in order to correct that. Uh and in fact, you might have to do a complete runaround. Of course, that's uh, not true if you have the correct item to get through. Uh, which, what was the item that you need to go through doors? The axe. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Clades did not have the axe. That is a game over for Clades. I. <clears throat> Like, the game is not long if you play it well and you know where you're going. Clades could potentially get two or three items relatively quickly from this spawn, but I don't think there's going to be enough time. Thinking about... No, because he will need four to go to Interfast. Thinking about it, if you end up on that side of the castle right there without the axe, you, you're done. You Wait, cannot get out. Are you serious? I'm thinking about it. I'm I'm checking over the map to be sure, and yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm correct. Uh, I don't think there was actually a way out of there without the axe. Do, do, do. If you, you don't have to go to that side. No, if you jump but if you get off shoved the over right, there by a death. If you jump off the right into the forest down below, and then go across the river to the left, uh, then you can get back to the bottom portion of the castle it's but then can you get out of that yeah no. no there's no way up because that's down the pipe wait so if you just end up over there and you don't already have the axe you're done yep this is bs <laughs> this is i so did bad. not realize that myself but yeah you if you don't have the axe uh for that point you're so dead. that specific spider kill was a soft lock that Clades didn't know about and that we didn't know about because this game is a very well designed game. So yeah, of course. Thinking about it, that might make the axe. Mm -hmm. But you don't. Well, to get the no, to get the chalice, you're probably going to bounce off of the castle into the forest at the bottom right of right. the map. Right, so you get thrown down there by the chalice collection most of the time. You can't actually get the chalice without falling. It's not easy, though. Yeah. 
I so that think... would mean spawning at the chalice point is actually a trap? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Well, you could just hold left and try not to fall off after getting to Chalice. Which is possible. It's very doable. Uh, doesn't always happen, but... Anyway, you can... I, I think we are starting to uncover some of the total crap that is accompanied with this game. I am still not 100% convinced that it's not doable if you're on that part of the map, but I'd have to look. And I don't know I if I want to do that today. <laughs> I'm trying to decide why I thought... You know, I might have... Uh... I might have used the uh, reset function to get around things that required the axe. That is very possible. But since they don't have access to the reset fu function, yeah, maybe they do need the axe. At the same maybe. time, that's part of Cuso Grande. That's the way that right. Cuso crumbles? Ugh. I'm not saying that again. Time! Yeah, yeah, no. We're it, done. We're done with this match. It is over. The players get to be freed on that note. And what a note it was. Ah, spinning frog. That's always what I want to see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and invite them to join voice and chat with us. Yeah, so Dana, Donkey Kong, how do you feel that they did? Uh, three items is good. Uh... Yeah, three items is pretty solid. For getting yeah. thrown into this game and having only an hour to work with it. Yeah, one hour to figure out this kind of nightmare of a game. At the same time, it's a game that I really love. I love the aesthetic. I love the type of gameplay. But I played a lot of Atari when I was young. So this is... Right? Yeah. This, yeah. Is, a, this is a heavy map awareness game if you know where everything is the game becomes so much easier if yeah. you've got a map so much easier otherwise it uh... takes an all it, it takes a while to get that knowledge well clades someone three two five five welcome both of you and i want to say clades you had the lead for a long time with two items but someone three two five five towards the end managed to snatch up a third making him the victor today so great job both of you this is a very difficult game yeah the control i would go so far uh, controlling go yeah the controls were yeah. very difficult to handle because you have left right and jump and that's your controls yeah and then you get the power up and all of a sudden jumping will now cost you life because <laughs> there's one button yeah this... that's a flaw the it makes a pretty good case for the baby of kangaroo being a better game because i actually felt like where my character was was my fault and not the game's fault yeah i thought this was atrocious yeah some parts there's it's very hard to go from one place to another i think it's just like figuring out how or like figuring out how to predict exactly where you will go and how movement will affect where you go considering that you have multiple jump heights as well to couple with your left and right it's it, it's definitely a trick it's definitely difficult and sometimes when you deflect off of an object the direction you deflect in doesn't make any sense either <laughs> yeah uh what's yeah. interesting to me though was that someone 3255 actually uh you used a strat resetting so that you would get uh, to a spawn that you liked more. I think you were going for the crown room, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and then I realized we were loading a safe safe, so I probably stuck the RNG, so I had to, like, death abuse to get there. Yeah, you probably had to die a few times in order to get that. Uh, that's completely understandable, and you're, you're probably right about that. With that said, it seemed like you almost had it calculated exactly how you needed to move in order to get the crown and not die. Yeah, I had, like, a setup, and then I forgot the setup, and then I <laughs> just winged it. <laughs> wow, yeah, that happens. 
Uh, the, yeah, the thing is, like, uh, this definitely is less of a platformer and more of a, well, not a straight-up platformer, but a puzzle platformer when it comes down to the heart of how you get through this. And puzzle platformers can be rough. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Clades, I, I know that you weren't the biggest fan of this game. Talk to me about that. You said you'd rather play the Sonic game? I mean, I oh, would that looks much more entertaining. Um, just the controls. The main thing was just the controls were so bad that <laughs> it overwhelmed overwhelmed everything else. Okay. Yeah, if, if the controls are that painful to get used to. But at the same time, you know, I, I watch this, and this controls so much better than other games of the time. <laughs> and I'm not even making that up, okay? This actually, like is about as good of controls as you could hope for for the Commodore 64. I mean, the last game large. I played for Kuso was Baby of Kangaroo, and I think that controls better than this. Okay, fine. This had a very fine. unique control scheme for the time. Yeah. Like, I, have, I was actually wishing I had up to jump when I was playing this, because then at least jump and fire wouldn't be the same thing. Yeah, that was... Uh, I think that's one of the biggest frustrations there. Uh... Although the whole fire and jump bound to the same button, I understand that it was a game that, you know, uh, a, a controller that generally only has one button. But when you do that, you have to have up to jump, like, right? But wait, 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 yeah, wait, wait, wait. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. up does nothing otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, I think up and down don't do anything. Yeah. They're basically just for aiming. Okay, for when you're firing. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and Where talk to aim. the devs about this, okay, and see if they can get it patched, because that's just ridiculous. <laughs> 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 or we could just hack it ourselves, whatever. Uh, seriously, though, this was a fun watch. Clades, I know that you took a loss here, but you are still in the bracket, you know, going down to the loser's bracket, but you are still alive for now. Uh, so honestly, you were about to win it up until I think about the last eight minutes or so. Yeah, the lead change was like around 52 or so. So it was yeah, close. I yeah. found the three items individually and I think I figured out some path to get those three. Yeah, just figuring out a path to go through for one good run is really what did it for you, someone. Uh, and yeah, I, I, honestly, yeah. I was a little bit concerned about where you were going uh, because you got the crown. And then I was like, I don't understand where you're going because there's like the goblet or the, the chalice is to the right and you were going to the left. But then when you got close to the point uh -huh. where you would jump off the castle, I was like, oh, there we go. You're going to go down and get the scissors and then head right and grab another item. Yeah. Yeah, looking at the map, I didn't realize the chalice was that close to the crown. Yeah, the shield was... It uh the better option to go for from the crown you almost oh. could have gotten the the shield if you'd just gone up a little higher now Clay, yeah, i didn't want to go up because that seemed hard i just wanted to go down because i knew the scissors were there yeah. believe it or not clades we actually think you might have been soft locked at one point and it's very difficult it. to tell <laughs> because because of all the doors, you were on the right side of all the, all of these doors that you had to have the axe, but the axe was on the other side. And looking at the map, we can't figure out how to get back to the left side of the castle. It so, happened when you died to a spider and it put you on the wrong side of the room when you respawned. Yep. If you remember that. It was near the end. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, so that, I... Yeah, my... Yeah. You got the BS. <laughs> a heavy part of that BS, seriously. Uh, really, this was a lot of fun to watch. I love watching this game. I know how frustrating the controls are. At the same time, I still love playing it. <laughs> well, any any other have you notes? Ever beat the game? No. Why would I beat nice. the game? I have. Oh, Dana did. Yeah, good job. Wow. Uh, any any last notes before we take off? Uh, no, it was kind of a fun match trying to figure out everything. Cool. No better than the first cauldron. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and raid Sinister One. He uh, is an old school guy uh, who does a lot of punch out, but he's currently doing co-op rescue rangers. And that is a fun run. He's right near the end. So let's go raid. And do we have a good raid message? Uh, something about bouncing? Uh, it just occurred to me we couldn't have used up to bounce higher because uh, the devs couldn't have the rhymed uh, higher with fire. Let's just do up to jump <laughs> to encourage him because up to jump definitely is the superior the superior oh. way to play video games go say hi to sinister for me everybody and we'll see you tomorrow at 2 p.m eastern for more cusa grande take care later bye dana bye donkey clock goodbye bye clades bye someone bye bye <laughs>